I'm going to do that to you. You may have millions. And I will the grocery store. I still want to live. So I put him on a sign with my dice on. And then I sign with an eagle to pay me. And then I receive from him whatever he gave me. This I did on Wednesday. On Friday, the phone rang about 4 30. It was my friend. He had to call me over here. He's one of your busy clients. I said, Yes, I'm actually fine. She said, That's cool. It's Friday night. Well, my wife and I were coming to the meeting tonight. It was perfectly all right. So he came to the meeting. After the meeting, he said, You ride home with me. And Bill, who's my wife, she goes home with the one who taught you. And my wife will go with you, the friend. So he went on to the party hut. And he always drove it all to London. Something falling apart. But I saw nothing like that in the dot. Now he took me over and told us this wonderful place to the New York one. The very thing in it that money could buy. But he drove me home. A new car was under a thousand miles. Not a word was said on the way home about money. Not a word was said at home. The one who drove my wife and his wife home left her quarter in there. And then five minutes later, she opened her purse and said, Yes, it's long, long overdue. But I think you'll find it more. And handed me a check for her on the house. I never asked for it. Never once in the five years of college, I would breathe again. And he gave me, she gave me, twelve hundred dollars. This is how it works. If you believe in the reality of your own wonderful imaginal acts, they came out of the moment. And now he has nothing. Things no name for him. He's completely out of bed and free of that feeling of all your friends' money over so many, many years. So, try it and then share with me the results of your experiment. And now, I think I'm going to ask my friends, the ashes, to test them on you. Did you have a question? Should we take everything seriously? Or only a few? And how will we distinguish the difference between the significant dream and just the normal dream? Well, first of all, everything is a communication from God. Every dream has meaning. But we are past masters of this interpreting the dream. Why often we need the help of someone who understands the universal language of symbolism? And then it is a universal language of symbolism. But if, for instance, I have a dream concerning a painting, it doesn't mean I'm going to have real support for them. A painting is a universal symbol of the reading of the universe. And the reading that I'm the creator or not. So, for the reasoning behind the thing, what was it in the story of the thing? I had that reason. Here was a sort of thing, an enormous interior, with everybody displaying flowers and plants, all kinds of vegetation. And just at closing time, I noticed the little bit, little rug, and so seeing no one around, I picked him up and placed him on something as tall as this. And then I took some flowers, and I took some uh, green leaves, and made a bed for him. And I also knew that you know, bring up the best food for him. But he could survive on flowers and leaves until someone opened the place the next day. And then it happened in dreams, they just appreciated it. And now I'm on the inside of the enormous supermarket. I'm looking down, here's the pig. And the pig is a tall, thin range of fellow. Quite a bit. But I'm thinking of the tiny one. Again, 
I don't tell him, I do this the same thing. I say to my daughter, Vicky, so will you get me some crackers for the cake? And she said, I have any money yet. I said, all this belongs to us. As no way is going to get some crackers. Meanwhile, I saw the meeting, something to feed him. And I brought the cake to him, and he said, what are you doing? I'm getting some food for my baby. And then he added some very thick looking grain, three heaping with our hands. I thanked him as strong as I could keep the speed. And then my daughter went over to a huge pyramid of crackers, and she pulled one from the base, which undoubtedly the entire picture and they all fell. As they fell, they revealed a little candle of a four inch stall, and the candle was lit. When I said to her, that's my candle. Then the words from scripture came into my mind. The words of Job and the words of Thomas. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. And when his candle shines upon my forehead, by his sight, I walk through darkness. So I say to Vicky, do not put the candles back. That's the word now. It must never be hid again. Never be put under a day, under a bushel, under anything. Now that that light is lit, he must be made it. And then I look. God has the faith the universal symbol of the redeemer. But I thought that imagine it creates reality. I told him, it is in the day of my life I don't have opportunities to exercise The thinness of the pig revealed to me I have not been escaped for the feeling of Christ that I should have been. He symbolized Christ. And I knew what to feed him by exercising my imagination not only on behalf of others. When I saw the opportunity to help him, I didn't exercise my imagination not only on behalf of the other who needed him. I didn't feed him. I am feeding Christ every time I exercise my imagination on him as a man. So that's the interpretation of that thing. If I didn't know the language of symbolism, I would wonder what the I didn't want to take. And the whole thing would seem so stupid. Yet that was communicating to me my life of exercising what I knew.